Hello everyone, I'm Vanessa Reagans, the creator of the Zenpreneur program, and today I have a very special guest on. Uh, her name is Bianca Janae. So everybody, here is Bianca. We are going to be doing a interview today. So Bianca, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So what has been your journey or why did you be decide to become an entrepreneur? Uh, for me, uh, working in fashion for so long, I, there was a desire I was really felt like wasn't being seen like in the fashion market. And so, you know, I just decided to create it myself, something that I wanted to see out there versus waiting for, you know, hoping somebody else is going to create, you know, something that's like a little bit special to me. So that's kind of what led me on the path of becoming an entrepreneur. Awesome. Awesome. And then can you share a little bit of your professional background? Uh, so for myself, I've been working in retail for, I say, the last like 10 years. And in the last two years, it's been more of the luxury retail sector. And then outside of that, I've also spent a couple years as a stylist assistant and then as well getting into wardrobe styling myself. And outside of that, I do poetry since I've been a kid. So that's just a bit of my background all the way around. Awesome. We have something in common. I love writing poetry, too. So that's definitely something. Yes. Yes. Self-expression. It's beautiful. All righty. So I kind of want to switch gears a little bit um, and ask you how racism has impacted you personally in your life. Um, it's like that's so layered because, you know, there's just so much to the conversation and we'd really be here all day if I was going into everything. But I think just tying it into my own family and things I've seen and just learned through stories of my parents. But my grandfather, he served in our military, and then eventually him and one of his cousins, they decided to open up um, one of the first Black-owned construction companies here in L.A., had 200 employees. It was a million-dollar company. It was called uh, Lewis Brothers Incorporated, and so they were doing really well building complexes, and he actually built his first home out here that's still, the original structure is still here, so it's beautiful to have that history, like, local to me. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, back in the L.A. riots time, um, after that had occurred, banks were no longer lending to black businesses. So during that time, my grandfather, he was in the middle of a bunch of buildings halfway through progression and couldn't complete them. So by the time the LA riots were over, a lot of black businesses, including my grandfather's, were not able to sustain and stay afloat. Due to that, my grandfather personally fell into a depression and he ended up in the mental health facility of the VA hospital where he spent the rest of his days and never could really shake that. Yeah. And so I just see the mental anguish from people I know or just within our own family of just, you know, not being able to deal with the demons or trying to process why these things occur to you and just the different injustices. And it's like, from people you know to people you don't know. And then as you get older and you get more educated, you see all the ways in which this has just always been intertwined in your life, whether it's through school, through work, through businesses. And, you know, it's just, it's, I feel like it's the mental part that it's always sticks with you. It's like, there's always a back layer that black people are continuing to process throughout outside of everyday life. Yes, absolutely. And thank you very much for sharing that, that your grandfather, that's, that's an incredible story. That's so cool. Definitely. <clears throat> so I want to highlight your brand, Cultured Vintage. So what is your vision for Cultured Vintage? So initially my vision for Cultured Vintage before I started out was I wanted to create a street style brand that kind of really just encompassed my culture and the love that I had become to found like to find within it once I had started to become more educated on the history and everything that comes with that. And also during my travels through different countries, it's like you get to see different fashion. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, it would be cool to be able to, 
make like customized pieces that were cultural and like still fit in different things I had learned of like different patterns and things I liked when I visited other countries. And I'm just like, if I could see something like that, but like had a self love theme empowered into the brand, um, that's kind of just like why I initially started it and like what kind of where the theme of my pieces come from. Um, so right now it's a street style brand that is mainly customized jackets that I hand paint. And then I also have some graphic tees as well that are just like stick with the theme. Um, I created a shirt that uh, has a picture of the Bobby Seal and Huey P. Newton, which are the founder of the Black Panther Party. And it um, has Frederick Douglass's quote, knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. So it's just like, for me, I feel like knowledge of self and community in the world around us really gives us that opportunity to free ourselves mentally um, from the things that we're going through and the things around us. So it's like I try to make sure all the pieces that I put out, they they have that feel to them and just like that knowledge in, because I feel like they can be conversation pieces and I wanted statement pieces when I would go to my poetry events to where it's like, I don't necessarily have to have a conversation with you about this, but you'll see this and maybe you'll want to inquire. Maybe we can have a dialogue or just even just seeing that powerful statement because I really just wanted to create something. It's like when I wore it, it's like, this is a self-love, something that I can be proud of. And so that's really where all of it stemmed from. That's amazing. Yeah, definitely. I saw, I watched your YouTube where you were describing and sharing all of your different pieces and what each part meant and why you put certain things on certain uh, jackets. It was really awesome. So I'll link that YouTube in our, in this video as well. So what does Culture Vintage offer uh, customers? I feel like it offers, if you are maybe the more casual shopper, it offers you um, some, just some unique pieces because I feel like you can go anywhere, are any major brand, you can get, you can get something for a, like a less amount, but it's like, it's not going to be unique. Right. Every, the other 400 people that bought those have the same thing. And then out, outside of that, then you get in on the back end how these things are manufactured. Right. And so like, you get into the fast fashion and how that is harmful to our environment. Mm -hmm. So it's like with this, it's like I repurpose all the clothing. So all the jackets I use are thrifted. So it's one you'd be buying ethical. <laughs> in, I'm creating everything. So it's like it'd be created in a no harm labor environment. But Really, I think just having that unique piece from the community and just I pretty much customize anything to what you want to say. So it's not just exempt to the statement pieces you see on my website. So everyone can just contact me and let me know kind of what they'd like to see on the jacket and just also infusing my style. And people are pretty open with letting me go with whatever creative direction I want to with that. So I guess getting to create something unique with my customers where it's just more personal to them or even who they're gifting it to. It's just like I get a lot of couples that are like, well, I want to get something for my boyfriend and, you know, he's Salvadorian and this and like, I'd like it to say this or, and you know, I had did a dedication piece called Kings Never Die. And, um, you know, I got a bunch of women who's like, can we get a Queens Never Die piece? And, you know, just the dedication of that with the roses on it. So just different things like that. Just get a more of a personalized experience when I feel like when you shop local. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And that customized experience is what a lot of people are really looking for, too. Exactly. Definitely. <laughs> so what obstacles have you encountered being an African-American business owner? Um, the thing that always stands out the most for me is um, I remember I was working at this Japanese store in Santa Monica called uh, Muji, and I had a client that would come in all the time. And I remember I invited her to one of my pop-up markets that I was taking place in. Um, it's a black business venture called Come Up LA. And it's basically a bunch of uh, black and brown businesses that get together to do a marketplace usually every third Sunday of the month. So I had um, got a chance to be a part of this. And so I invited her to, you know, to come and shop, to come and join, enjoy the experience. And she came and I remember I saw her in my store again after that and she had a conversation with me. She's like, you know, you're talented. She's just like, I can get you placement and get your brand placement in movies and on videos. 
and you know in department stores she's like I see that for you but she's like I would like you to stray away from the message like the Black Panthers the a lot of this she's like that's not really you know what's going to be marketable that's not really what I think I don't think I can get you into these spaces if you don't stray away from that message and I remember just like thinking initially you know how exciting the opportunity seemed until like I saw the underline of it because I'm just like well that's what I created the brand the whole brand on in the first Mm -hmm. place so it's just like so in order to do business in certain spaces I basically have to not be true to to myself and to the things that I feel are important to me and so like that was just like you know a message that I felt like you know stuck with me and I was just like man like you know if I can't do these things in these particular spaces, then does this mean I will never be successful in 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 these spaces if I have to go through these avenues to get there? Right. And then I think that's when it comes into really just like defining success for yourself and like what truly makes you happy as a person and a business owner and how you're able to sleep at night with the decisions you do and don't make for yourself and your business. And so, um, yeah, that's, I feel like that's been one of the main ones. And as more as the things of current state are being talked about in the world, it's like also been seeing other small business owners saying they come across the same situation that that's crossed their plate. So I'm just like, oh, like, you know, these aren't unique or isolated incidences in regards to black businesses, even trying to be on some sort of steady stream or mainstream. Right, exactly. So you touched on this as well, but um, how are you taking any other steps to create change in the African American community as a business owner? Um, me myself personally, I like to be as directly involved as I can. So for myself, that's protesting some days, petitioning other days. And then also having the conversations with other business owners about their practices and their transparency and just us as individuals, because it's like outside of a business, like we're all people like, you know, we're we're humans. And so it's like outside of the capitalism, it's like we do have to connect on just that human level. So I think just trying to make sure I personally do everything I can, whether that's attending the meeting, the community meetings and organizing, trying to be informed, making sure others are informed on that. So uh, that's more so what I do in regards to that. Awesome. So what advice would you have for me, a white business owner, uh, to do in order to support this necessary mindset shift in our society? I feel like right now it's like it's more than just inclusivity. It's more than just, you know, even simple conversations because it's like there's there's so much change that has to occur all around the board that really affects us all. And so I feel like for for business owners that are, you know, want to know what they can do, I feel like one you know, if you have these bigger, bigger businesses, bigger corporations, making sure they are inclusive, making sure your personal pre- prejudices are not hindering or weighing in on the business in any way, making sure that there are black women and men in leadership that are qualified to do these things and also educate and just make the company better in that space. Outside of that, it's like the donating to the charities, your local your local charities and organizations, that is important. Protesting, signing the petitions if you can, getting that out there. But it's just like, it's conversations with our bosses, conversations with our employees, conversations with our families. Like it's our everyday life with our customers even, and even just where we stand as a business that this is what's right, this is what isn't, and this is where we stand. And it's okay that we are going to be vocal about standing for the things that are right and getting out of this mindset that businesses need to not be transparent when it comes to things that are not okay that are happening within companies. But also it's just like outside of the inclusivity, it's like really you know, putting your money out there too, also patronizing Black businesses as well, because it's like, we're talking about pay equality and this and that, but it's like, mm-hmm. there can be no pay equality when there isn't 
you know, compensation equality across the board. So it's just like the same way there's other black people that also haven't been patronizing black businesses. Well, it's like money has to be funneled into the community through certain ways. And if if the corporations, if the government isn't doing this, then it's like we have the spending power in our local dollars, each and every one of us. Right, right. And where we put our money, that speaks volumes for sure. Awesome. Thank you very much for sharing all of that. That was beautifully stated. I do want to shift into social media and wanted to ask, do you use social media right now to market cultured vintage? Uh, yes, I mainly use um, Instagram. I also run my website through Squarespace. So I'd say my website is the main focal point of that. Um, but I do tend to like to get my friends involved to shoot promo videos for me. So between their visual campaigns and then using that on Instagram and then on my website, I find that that's been really helpful for me. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of Instagram. I took their later con, um, virtual conference. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it was, it was insane. It, it's coming up again in September this year. I'll send you the link. I got the invite the other day. It, it was fantastic. All the things that you learn how to really implement that platform into your marketing. It was fantastic. I know you'd soak it all up. <laughs> all right. So you did answer that one of your favorite platforms is um, Instagram. Did you mention that you have Facebook too, or just Instagram right now? I do have Facebook, but it's only like my personal Facebook. I'm okay. still trying to build the business. Facebook. Sure. Sure. Perfect. Well, if you have any questions, let me know. I can totally support you Definitely. with that. <laughs> Zenpreneur. <Talk. laughs> Uh, so how has your business grown since being active on social media? Um, my business has grown just in the sense of when I actually for a while, when I started the business, no one actually really knew that I was creating these pieces to sell or was selling them. So I want to say it was even some of my friends for like a year were like, wait, these are yours. Like you sell these. And so anyways, I, kind of had, I was like, wow, I'm going to have to do a little better at this marketing thing because I'm just like, I've had this website up and built and I'm like, there's a lot of people that still don't even know that I'm doing this or I do this. So through that, I had to get a little bit more like on the forefront with my brand and talking about it, which is a, a little uncomfortable for me. So it's like getting used to, I guess, being the face of something and, you know, mm -hmm. everything that that entails. So for me, it's like, I was in the shoes as the model. I was creative directing the people behind it. I was styling everybody that I was getting for, you know, for the marketing pictures and videos and um, really just making the whole vision come together. So it's like as I did that and just became, um, you know, more educated and better ways to market myself and my business and consistently putting that out there naturally, it just got more attention or just more people finding out about it or just creating space and opportunity um, for people to know more about me at the very least and just open up that platform for more like discussion. Awesome. Perfect. So we just got a comment and I just want to pause really fast and pop this on the screen. Trava Faust, if you're still on, thank you so much for watching us live. She says, love your products, Bianca. I look forward to purchase purchasing something soon. Uh, Trava and I have been friends for a good long time. So Yes, please check out her site and check out her Instagram and her YouTube and her YouTube. Found her YouTube too. <laughs> Alrighty. So Bianca, are you or do you, are you using social media to speak up about equality for the black community? Oh yes, uh, this, is a, this isn't new. So I'm pretty happy that um, all of this is getting more of ten attention and just yes. what is really happening in the world just because people like myself have been out here protesting for the last seven, eight, nine more years because people doing it, been doing it way longer than me because this is a generational thing and it didn't just start, didn't just get here. Um, but I'd say for at least since Trayvon Martin passed, I've been pretty consistently vocal about the police brutality, even just things I've witnessed living in New York for a short amount of time when those particular protests were occurring and just times of being off work and seeing how 
things weren't being broadcasted on the media. They were just sweeping people up off the streets and taking them away in SWAT cars. And so just things like that that you just witness over time, it's like you really can't be quiet about them. It's like I always say it's like when the spirit moves you to speak, you have to speak. And so things like this, it's just like there is no room for silence, in my opinion. So I'm pretty vocal about it. And, you know, whether that's been a good thing or a bad thing, I feel it's a necessary thing for people to know what's going on, to be informed, and also where I stand on things. Because it's just like, it's very, I feel like there is no in-between space on morality and just human decency that everyone deserves a right to live. Absolutely, absolutely. Alrighty, so shifting a little bit again with some business app tools, I'm just curious if you're using any types of business tools, um, applications on the computer or your phone that uh, support you in operating your business on a day to day. Um, thankfully, because I tend to only sell in person at pop up markets, most of what I need is done online, uh, but. I tend to use Square when I do go to my pop-up markets just so I'm able to do the um, the cashless transactions with customers so it's easier for them. Um, but between Squarespace and Square and then like all the analytics that the website already takes off, it's like those have actually been my only needs thus far business-wise. Perfect. And then how has your business become more efficient as you've weaved those pieces of technology into your workflow? Um, it's, I feel like the back end of keeping things organized is a lot easier for me, whether that's just capturing the proper, you know, customer information and just making less steps in regards to that. And even just how all the money is exchanged in, in that is just like, it's so much easier, but especially the reports on where your traffic is coming from yes, and stuff just like those analytics. I'm like, ah, things I probably wouldn't have been like looking for if it wasn't already like detailed for me and some of the other things that I've I've been purchasing for the business. Right. Right. Exactly. Awesome. And for self-care, I'm a huge fan of self-care. I've have about 14 plus years of being a massage therapist. So, and a yoga instructor. So I am all about anatomy. I'm an anatomy nerd. Absolutely. (laughs) So I'm curious, Bianco, what do you do to recharge your energy? Uh, To recharge, I usually, one, have to take a step back from my phone and social media for, like, an extended period of time, usually, just because, like, I'm an empath. So outside of being around everyone's energy in person and what everyone may be individually going through, also soaking that in from social media, it's a lot. Yes. Uh, So me, I have to take the space to have like just some quiet time away to be grounded with the things around me and also the people that are around me presently in person. And then, so yeah, that's, that's the main thing I have to do for recharging, sleeping, meditating, therapy, um, reading and writing and continuing to do my poetry. Awesome. I love that. And do you have like a self-care routine or do you tend to kind of just notice when you need um, an energy boost and that's kind of when you do it? What does that look like for you? I think for me, it is more of noticing the the fluctuations in my moods and when I do need to just like take that time away to do my routine. And so, you know, when that when those times do come that is the times where I'm like, okay, we specifically need to go and meditate or go play basketball to clear your head and do your reading, do your writing, do, take some space, listen to music. I like to listen to lo-fi music, like usually when I'm writing, just no words, nobody else's thoughts, just like the music, just so I can see how I'm really feeling about things. Um, but yeah, I feel like my the only consistent self care routine I have would be probably like my week my weekly therapy and then my reading and my writing. Outside of that, it's more so just when my moods are off, and then I'm like, okay, I need to take some extra time. For sure, awesome. Glad to hear that you are aware of of when those energy fluctuations happen. That's good. And last but not least, how do you prefer 
people to communicate or contact you? Is it on social media, the email address? What would you prefer? Uh, I prefer uh, social media handles um, just because that's just the quickest one, just between uh, business emails and everything else. Sometimes Instagram is just the easiest. So I prefer Instagram. Um, my business Instagram is Cultured Vintage. And then my personal Instagram is Miss Vintage. Awesome. Um, you can find me on both of those. Perfect. Wonderful. And I'll link your email, your website, all of your contact information to this video so everybody can check everything out that you offer. Awesome. Well, Bianca, this was fantastic. Thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me today. And I am just excited about meeting you. And I hope that we obviously can continue um, our um, relationship and um, support each other as we build our businesses. So yes, thank you thank so much. You. Look forward to talking to you more. Absolutely. All righty. All right. Well, that will take care of our interview for today. Thank you so much, everyone. And we'll sign off for now. Have a great week.